Today we're going to continue our discussion about email headers and how they can be a very powerful tool for helping you to identify possible spam and hoaxes. First, we're going to start with a legitimate email. And when we view the, the headers on this, when we show the original, this brings up a screen and the what I want to point out on this screen is a very important line of code that appears quite a ways down the screen and it says Google this one right here bet designates Joanne um, and it'll have an, some IP address and then it'll say as permitted sender this is major because you will see that line of code appears in virtually every single piece of legitimate email correspondence that you have with another person it will literally say I mean it will have something to this effect Google you know uh, say something over here about an IP address or something something and it will say as permitted sender and designates as permitted sender you will see that in virtually all of your legitimate um, email communication okay let's contrast that real quick let's shut that email go back and let's take a look at one that's not so legitimate imagine my delight when I'm producing my uh, my lesson on email spoofing and into my mailbox comes a perfect example of an email that was a, allegedly sent from an acquaintance that is coming to me on a different email this is a new feature of Gmail that I'll point out. This says right at the top, you know, this message does not look particularly right. If you trust it, you can do this or that. What we're going to do though, we're going to look at the original. And I'll point out several things about this original that are what flags it as not legitimate. First, this is the line Oh, and by the way, I want to tell you that I program computer code for a living. And a lot of what's on this screen is jumbled gobbledygook to me. So I do not expect for you to be fluent in translating whatever the computerese language is that, that this is talking. You don't need to know that. But what I do expect for everyone to come away with is a basic competency at skimming these email headers and looking for things that are flags in email correspondence that you might um, doubt the accuracy or the legitimacy of. Okay, so that uh, parenthetical aside, now we're back to looking at this source. And we'll point out right here, google.com, it gives an IP address and it says, is neither permitted nor denied by domain of and yeah it's got Tanya they Trump okay so the biggest thing I want you to know though about that is that neither permitted nor denied thing it's basically saying well I can't tell if it is or isn't the permitted sender and so that's a flag because legitimate correspondence I'm telling you when you look at those sources on it or view the originals on your email correspondence, you, you'll see that they almost all, I, mean, I, I just, I didn't see any that didn't say this was not the authorized sender, but then I only looked at about 15 of them. So anyway, that is a major signal, it is neither permitted nor denied. Okay, another thing was, as I was scrolling through this, I just happened to note my eyes fall, fell on this right here, Bumblebee4632 at att.net. I have no idea what that is. I do know that my friend uses my friend uses AOL. So the fact that that att.net's even in there is just it's just weird. I don't know what that is. I could probably Google the X Rocket find out, but we don't need to. Because what we're looking for is flags and things that flag this as potentially illegitimate. And guess what? That's a flag as potentially illegitimate. Okay, so the email comes from Tanya Finley, allegedly from Tanya Finley. But the uh, reply to address, it goes to a Yahoo account. So they've taken the same username and registered it at, a, at Yahoo. 
major, major flags. Although, I will point out that if you're dealing with business correspondence in particular, it's not that unusual for businesses to direct replies to a different email address. So just based on the fact that the reply is going to a different place is not enough to just completely state an email is without a doubt spam. Well, not exactly, because there are some legitimate uses and situations where legitimate emails would be redirected to a different reply address than the from. So that's it's not a fail safe. Okay. And let's see. Go back to the examples. We'll take a look at this one that comes from Michael here. He's interesting, um, classic, we've got the million dollar product that's going to do, I mean this is, you know, classic spam mail. Alright, so you look at this, where does it come from? Where does it originate from? Well, right away we come down to this line, google.com, this is, that's Gmail, Gmail is saying that this server is neither permitted nor denied. Well, there you go, that's as far as we need to read. That's a flag. Neither permitted nor denied is a flag. This email, the from, the from and the, and I, I always get turned around by this, but the from, the reply to and the from on this one go to the same place. So there probably is a real user at that email address that's waiting to receive responses. So that's not really a question. There probably is a real person that's monitoring this real email address. But interesting practice down here is that if you notice, this is Tom F at Gmail, Tom F at Gmail, Tom F at Gmail. Basically, what this program has done is fabricated email addresses on the fly using some formula or something, you know, slapping on a whole bunch of random letters to the end and sending out emails at gmail.com. And I've received, you know, I'm on here because I've I've received I've received this email. So that's a that's a flag that if you see a whole bunch of emails that are spelled ridiculously similarly to yours all going to the at same domain as yours, um, and and you happen to be included on it. That is without a doubt a spam message. So close the headers. We'll go back to one of these emails. Last, we'll take a look at this one that I received a long time ago. From this, this one dates back to 2008, and either because this email is so old or because maybe this didn't exist back then when you click on this one it doesn't have the drop down arrow over here but it just has the show details now the interesting thing about this is that the details when you click them it's from Ponheri, it's to Ponheri, it's reply to Ponheri so pretty pretty odd huh I mean how could it be to Ponheri and also from and you know all that well, I was sent this as a blind carbon copy, so I was BCC'd on this email. And so that means that I don't know who else got this message as in addition to me. But um, the interesting thing is it really was did come from my friend's uh, email account. At the time, I had never seen a message like this before. It was, it was uh, very strange. But of course, uh, the thing that tipped me that this was strange was that they need to be lent a sum of thirteen hundred and thirty pounds. And uh, but even still, um, and I had just gotten back from. Cambodia. This person, particularly, she lives in Cambodia, and so I, 
I had just gotten back from there and I thought, wow, well, maybe she did travel. I mean, she was saying that she was going to travel. So anyway, this was one of those crazy timing incidents. But I replied to this email to these crazy people. And what I basically did was I couldn't remember the name of her third child and asked if she could verify the name of her third child. And in fact, I can remember the name of her third child. I know all of her children. So to me, that was like, you know, can she do that or not? And of course, when they replied, they had no interest at all in verifying the name of her children. They just were very excited. They called a live fish. And so they immediately started working me to try to get me to send them this 1,330 pounds. But when that was just, they eventually gave up when they saw that I just wasn't going to going to do it. But it, it turned out, yeah, they really did put a key logger on her machine. And they stole her password when she typed it in to Yahoo. And uh, that's, that's how she, they got her password. And then they logged into her account and changed her password so she couldn't get into her own email account anymore. And they sent out all these nasty emails to people trying to fish and see who, who, how they could get money from people in her name. So pretty scary stuff. So there you have it. We have taken a look at how to use the email headers to get more powerful information and take a look at some of, of that and what it all means. Hopefully this will help you become smarter email users. <clears throat>